Hi there. Uh, recently I had a new experience that I've never done before and I wanted to share that with you. I went to Fayetteville, West Virginia, um, actually headed through there on a camping trip, and I stopped and went to Blue, uh, Wild Blue Adventures. It's a company that does biplane flights. So here I yeah, am, I'm just taking off. Uh, I did this and uh, I did the Summersville Lake flight. It's a 40 minute flight um, going around the area there in Fayetteville. It's, uh, it was a beautiful day. Oh, it was uh, August 2014 and the weather couldn't have been better. Uh, there was just, it was probably like 75 degrees, uh, sunny, clear for the most part. Yeah, there's some clouds in the background, but there was nothing, you know, it was clear where we were, so uh, everything was really nice. Um, I, the, the flight was, like I said, over 40 minutes long, so I cut out a lot to get it down to about 10 minutes, so um, I'll go over a couple of the, I'm going to show you a couple of stunts here, and um, some of the scenery, the, like the main points of the scenery or whatever. Of course, there's scenery every second of the time, because this area is filled with lakes, rivers, mountains, um, just trees everywhere. It's a, it's a very gorgeous area. I definitely recommend it. Uh, I know there's a lot of whitewater rafting and kayaking and what have you through there. He tries to keep everything authentic uh, on the plane and, and his uh, the, the clothes that he wears, um, even the the microphones they were using for communication. They were um, from the back the, in the, the day, you know, like uh, they. They're not modernized or anything like that. The only thing that really modernized on the whole uh, outfit there is just the, the camera. Right here we're going over Summers of the Lake. This is just some uh, shots of it. It's a gorgeous lake. And we'll be doing some stunts here in a second. Um, to start off, we're gonna do a, a hammerhead. And then we go right into a loop and then uh, do a barrel roll. One of the cool things is when we're doing the stunts, like, so I'm in the front and everything that's in the front for controlling is the same thing that's in the back. And they, in those types of planes, if you move the stick in the back, the stick in the front moves. If you pull on a lever in the back, the lever in the front uh, moves. So when we're doing barrel rows, he's got that thing and it's pulled over all the way to the left and it's like hitting my leg. And uh, I, could, I could grab the, the stick at any time and move it while well, of course it wasn't about to do that but uh, maybe next time one more thing I did want to say about the scenery um, although it was amazing the entire thing uh, I think I would like to go back in a month and uh, think that when all the leaves are changing and everything, just to see all the colors on the trees, I think that'd be a whole new experience. I, I think someday, probably not this year, but maybe another year, uh, I definitely would consider doing that. Right here we're doing a little flyby on an airstrip right next to the uh, lake. Uh, this this airstrip's pretty cool because all you see is tree line when you're flying right here. And then as soon as you come pull up over the tree line, 
it comes out right onto the lake so it's a, it's a really beautiful airfield how it comes off there and uh, yeah it, this was a really great area that's all I can say about it I'm, I definitely would recommend this specific one even if uh, I don't know if biplanes if they do this all over or not but uh, I enjoyed this one very much. So, and the, and the guy it was very uh, kind, and he had a good staff and everything. I got along with him well. Uh, one of the things that doesn't really convey in the video is right here, and you'll see like what he did is he kind of we were up a little bit in the sky, and then we come down real close to the tree line, and it looked like you know we didn't get that close to the tree line. But when you're sitting in that cockpit. I'm telling you, it feels like you're about to hit those trees. It feels like you're less than 10 feet away from them. Because you can't really get a good visual on what's below, right but directly below you and how close you are to stuff. I mean, he's probably done it a thousand times, so he's used to it. But uh, I was a little freaked out a couple times thinking, hey, if his hand slips off that stick. <laughs> right here we're doing a, here's the second or third set of tricks. And it's right in front of the gorge. You see, like, there's a, this is one of the bridges, like, a lot of people go under for uh, rafting and all that. And, and I, would, I would have to imagine they do some bungee jumping off of that thing. It's a pretty good bridge there. All these tricks that we're doing, though, like, everything's really cool when you're there. Like, when you're, you're looking up and you're looking at straight at the ground and you're upside down, you know, a couple thousand feet off the ground. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. So here as we are uh, approaching our final set of stunts for the day, um, again the hammerhead, the loop, and the barrel roll, um, we're going to, after that, go right into the final stunt, the grand finale, which is a four point roll. And what that is, is a, it's a basic uh, roll, except for during the roll you actually come to a stop at four different points during the, the process of the roll. Um, during the uh, flight itself, I kind of thought it was a little lackluster. Um, I think it's because it didn't churn my stomach like some of the other ones did, but watching the video later, I think it looks pretty cool, and I think it's one of those ones that when you watch it from the ground, it is uh, pretty cool to see. Here I just wanted to point out the, the propeller, if you look at it, it looks like it's coming to a complete stop. It's really actually going full tilt. I don't, I don't understand the camera and the lighting, how it does that, but uh, it's a good thing I didn't notice that when we were flying, otherwise that would probably freaked me out a little bit. Just one last final thing about uh, the authenticity of this plane, even as we're landing. The, the tires on it are actually the same uh, type of tire that they used back in the 40s. Because um, I asked him why they don't, why we're not landing on the, the pavement. And he said because the, if we did, it would just tear up the tires and they'd have to get new tires all the time. So just like they did back in the day, we got to land on the grass, which is really cool because I've never done that before. So I can cross that one off the old bucket list. Uh, thanks for watching my video.